Hello, my name is not important right now. I just wanted to let you know right now, I believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe he is God. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I believe all that stuff. You can call me a Jesus Freak. Bible Thumper. Whatever you want, I'll accept that. And I'll smile. But you know, I prefer the term a nerd for God's word. You know why? Because of this. God's word. It's like, it's food. It's a little food. You read it, and you're satisfied. Why? Because after coming to know who Christ is, what he did for me on the cross, I can't stop myself from opening this. I didn't grow up in a religious household. No. The thought of God was the last thing on my mind. For years. Years. I was... Uh, it was about 19-ish uh, when I got introduced uh, to church life uh, by my... Uh, she's, she's not my wife. Uh, she wasn't at that time. And, uh, you know, I had a view, like most individuals. I didn't believe anything that came from this, the Bible. I didn't believe it. Did not believe it. You know, you could have called me an atheist or agnostic or whatever. Um, I was born... I was born into, you know, you know, the family and, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a dad in my life. He up and walked. He has another family elsewhere. Um, I have a brother and sister. Um, sister is uh, still with me. Um, you know, she's in her teens right now. Uh, my brother, on the other hand, uh, He's not physically with me. He's, um, you know, he's dead. Uh, he physically died. Uh, when he was uh, born, he was uh, diagnosed you know, with a heart defect called tetralogy of flow or valet. Uh, basically, whenever he cried, his good blood would mix with his bad blood, and you know, when the two mix, it would cause him to turn blue. So that when he was older, they wanted to do surgery to maybe correct it or fix it. And so when he was 11 months old, um, you know, he went in for surgery and he didn't make it. And I was in my, I was in my youth. I was like 12 maybe at that time. I was getting ready to be in the seventh grade, and you know that was around the time of 9/11. So I got to. I got to, um, you know, I got to hold him. I got to hold him, and, uh, you know, being able to hold a, you know, a dead corpse, especially an infant corpse, so in this case it was my little brother. I, you know, closed myself off from the world. I doubted the existence of God. You know, I said, you know, if he existed, then why did he die? Why am I holding him right now? So I spent, you know, the remainder of my youth, you know, getting into trouble, doing whatever I can to, you know, cause others to be in pain. You know, because it was all about me. Me, 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 me. Whether I hit them, strangle them, whatever. It was all about me. It was only uh, uh, till when I was about 19 when you know I really you know, gave it a go as far as the whole church life, you know, going to church and all that stuff. Uh, I met a uh, <laughs> a Bible believing. Uh, female and uh, 
She believed that Jesus Christ died for her sins. She believed. And, you know, it was strange to me. You know, you're a little too old for believing in a fairy tale. It's not a fairy tale. So, by 19, you know, you gave an honest attempt to, you know, comprehend, you know, what this says. I don't understand any of it. It was Christianese. It was jargon. It was like, ugh, just whatever. All right, I'm sitting here. Huh? It's over. Oh, all right. That was me sleeping. Sleeping as the pastor was preaching the word. I didn't understand the things of God because, as the Bible puts it, because of one man's sin, all have sinned. All fall, all fall short of the glory of God. We're born spiritually dead. We don't understand the things of God. We hate the light. We prefer the darkness. So I didn't understand any of it. And this progressed on for a couple years. When I was about 24 years old, um, you know, the girl I met, um, you know, she became my girlfriend. And then from girlfriend, she became my fiance. So we were engaged. We had a wedding date. And, you know, I was doing the check. I was doing the check thing. You know, I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, I'm doing all these things that, you know, would kind of make it look like, you know, I'm a believer and all that. And, you know, uh, it was a pastor recommendation that we postpone our wedding. And that event enabled me to really see, to really see that I was a sinner before a holy God. And uh, yeah, I bowed the knee that day. It was uh, it was a very interesting day. A very interesting day. There was a lot of things that had progressed to that, and uh, you know, the Lord had uh, used that that whole experience to shed light, you know, into this 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 heart of stone. It's no longer a hard stone. It's the worst day of my life. The worst day. And it enabled me to see, to realize that I was a sinner. That I had no right to even be a part of the family. Had no right to marry, you know, one of, you know, God's. Uh, children and you know, we um, said that we become adopted into the family sons and daughters children of God I had no right it was really hard uh, seeing my fiance cry she began to you know just question things and, you know, that day, uh, a friend of mine, uh, and he's, he's not a believer, but he gave me a call to give his brother-in-law, you know, a ride to the airport. And I really did not want to go. I did not want to go and give him a ride. I didn't. But I went. It was on that drive I began to just question everything, you know, about what does all this mean. I got to his house. The dude was, uh, you know, hysterically grateful. Like, dude, he said, dude, you're my savior. Thank you. 
know, natural response would be like, you know, to feed into it and whatever. I said no. Savior can be known through the Word of God. The Bible that's right there on the shelf tells you who it is. Jesus Christ. And you know they laughed just you know, they laughed it off a little bit. And you know, I drove them to the airport and it was a long, long drive. So just thinking and just remembering all these things that have enabled me to have this this view that, you know, God didn't exist and you know, it's all a sham and all this stuff and I was wrong. You know, the death of my brother, you know, I used that a lot, but after, you know, reading uh, the passage, you know, you know, I saw that, you know, that Jesus used children a lot to make a point. You, know, you gotta be like these little kids, you know, they're innocent. Whoever receives a child like this receives me, you know. It's, so, you know, I knew that my brother was in good hands. I knew that he wasn't what most people say, you know, just dust. You know, that he ended. That was it. So, you know, that was uh, that situation. And, down inside and I knew that you know, there was a God and you know I was just too stubborn to to acknowledge it and I uh, came over on with all this all this emotion and all this stuff and uh, that that night after I dropped them off and drove all the way back over here you know, I just Bowed the knee, I cried out to him. I said I was sorry for what I had done, and you know, it was just self-reflection. You know, everybody goes through different things, and you know, bowed the knee to Jesus Christ and pleaded to Him to be my Lord and Savior. He accepted Him. It was a horrible day, but the following day it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders. Turn on the radio, it was Caleb. Made sense. I understood. It was great. And at the expense of, uh, you know, my wife, or she was my fiance then, um, at the expense of my fiance, of going through the hardship. You know, I'm grateful. And then, you know, when I opened up the Bible, it made crystal clear sense. I understood. I was no longer spiritually dead. So my plea to you is, uh, if you have not yet repented of your sins, if you have not examined the old law, Old Testament law, acknowledge that, yep, deserve death penalty, I violated that one, I did that one, I did that one last week, this, this, just ex realize that when you die, if you don't have Christ, envision it being like a nuclear blast, if you're right there in front of this bomb going up blowing up. It's going to incinerate you. There's going to be a little too few remains, you know, of you. He steps right in your place. In front of you. He takes all that for you. And all it, you know, all it takes is to realize that you are a sinner before a holy God. And without him, his word, 
the instruction of how to conduct your life, you're just gonna be miserable. You're just gonna wander around in doubt. Thank you for watching this. And know that the greatest need is to know who Christ is and what he has done for you and me. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon you and breathe life into you, would enable you to learn, would convict you with the word. I pray that I would have another brother and sister in Christ. It's the greatest need that you need. The greatest need is having Christ. It's not about what you do. He's the focal point. Thank you.